Tantric Initiation by Elaine Danilou. In dealing with initiation, we cannot ignore Tantric Initiation, which utilizes elements of a sexual nature. In the Christian world, these have often been the cause, or more often the pretext, for persecuting initiatic groups, whether such rites were practiced or not. Associating the demoniac with the sexual is peculiar to the Christian world. This is probably due to the fact that Dionysian rites, in which direct contact with the supernatural world was sought through states of ecstasy involving the whole of the human being, continue to be the true religion of the ancient world, against which Christianity was attempting to assert itself. Evil is whatever is pagan, wrote the Christian historian Orisius in the 5th century. It is relatively easy to overthrow state religions and official cults by replacing the gods of the conquered with those of the conquerors while maintaining the rites, which is what Imperial Rome did without any great shock in the countries it conquered. Christianity followed this practice in certain regions. Erotic mystic rites, however, and their powerful effect on the participants had either to be assimilated or violently rejected by the new religion. Assimilation is the only way to maintain the continuity of any true mystic experience. This was the case with Mahayana Buddhism, which assimilated Tantric Shaivism and its rites, and also with Islam, where Sufism represents an assimilation of the ecstatic ceremonies and erotic mystic approach to the divine. The Sufi Zikr, rhythmic chanting, scarcely differs from the Greek Dithram, wild ecstatic hymns to Dionysus, which corresponds to the Hindu Kirtana, hymns of glory. In the UNESCO record collection, I have published a Syrian zikr and a zikr recorded in Yugoslavia, which are closely related to the Greek Dionysian rites. Numerous sects did their utmost to maintain a Dionysian type initiatic tradition in the Christian world, but were ferociously persecuted for political reasons, which have nothing to do with truly religious values. Organisms whose aims are purely spiritual are thus persecuted when civil and ecclesiastical authorities seek to establish their total hegemony over souls. The Catholic Church has played this sinister role throughout the ages, just as Nazism and Marxism have done in our own times. The pretext of erotic devil worship was one of the arms used to destroy initiatic traditions. In actual fact, some initiatic groups managed to maintain their spiritual traditions in spite of the public authorities and the churches. In India, Shaivism, of which the Dionysian religion is only the Western branch, resisted first Vedic, then Buddhist Puritanism, and has regained its predominant place in modern Hinduism with its essential method, which is yoga in all its forms. Yoga is the only method whose aim is to determine the subtle structures of the human being to define the human being's latent powers and to perceive those aspects of the material and immaterial world that are inaccessible to the senses. Only yoga can explain the raison d'etre of the powers transmitted by initiation. A person's real body is a subtle body, in which the centers of consciousness and vital and spiritual energies are located very differently from those that appear in the physical body. In the efforts of introspection, Having reduced the mind's agitation to silence, the yogi descends to the deepest part of the self. It is in the region of the sexual organs that one attains pure knowledge, non-manifest intellect, and becomes aware of the cosmic being, the Hirana Garbha, the cosmic egg of light. Tantric theory establishes a link between the inner organ, pure intellect, the world principle, and the outer organ, the procreative organ, the source of life, it considers all other vital sensory or mental functions as secondary. The divine is manifest in the form of consciousness and life. Consciousness is never inert or lifeless. In the microcosm, the transmission of life is equivalent to the creation of the cosmos. It is essentially a divine act. According to tantric principles, a man is merely the bearer of his phallus. His whole being is conditioned by this procreative purpose, since it is through a succession of living beings that life consciousness, knowledge, and initiatic powers are transmitted. At the same time, since the divine state is a state of total well-being, it is in the instant of procreative pleasure that a person is closest to God and glimpses divine bliss. The divine state thus 
has its image, that spark of bliss that derives from the uniting of the procreative organs. Shiva is represented in the form of an erect phallus, in perpetual union with the female organ, an image of Shakti, the primordial energy from which the world came forth. The mother is a receptacle that receives the seed from which the living being comes forth. In tantric theory, it is through practices of an erotic nature that the initiate can feed the energies needed for action, overcome all obstacles, and draw near to the divine. This is not merely through procreation alone, but through the illuminating nature of pleasure. Any sexual act can be organized as a magic rite. It is at the moment of sexual union that we can in some way couple up to the divine, since, according to the Chendogya Upanishad, the enlightening nature of pleasure can become the starting point for true experience of the divine state. The energy coiled up at the base of the spine can then mount through the various centers of the subtle body, awakening all of one's latent powers, and reaches the open door at the top of the skull, through which the adept can leave the material body and unite with the divine. Such experience, which demands from the very start the suppression of all the mind's agitation, is both difficult and dangerous, requiring a reliable guide and rigorous initiatic discipline. The degrees of tantric initiation are complex, and its rites extremely secret. According to the tantras, there are two ways to spiritual and mystical realization. The right-hand way, which utilizes the energy diffused in the human being, and the left-hand way, which finds its direct support in procreative energy and utilizes transfigured sexual experience. The latter is the quickest and most effective way, but dangerous, since the powers it unleashes can become insurmountable obstacles if one stops. It is thus that magicians are created, being in fact fallen adepts. It is very important to know tantric initiation, since all groups seeking mystical experience utilize the language and the symbols of love, even if in practice tantric ritual is excluded. Tantric rites are of two kinds, according to whether the predominant aspect is the female principle, or Shakti, in which the female organ is worshipped as the primordial cave, whence the human race came forth, or Shaivite rites, in which the phallus is worshipped as the source of life. In the final analysis, it seems that all initiation is ultimately connected with Shaivism, or with its kindred Dionysian or Sufi forms. Traces of such an origin can be detected in authentic initiatic groups in the Christian, Vedic, Taoist, Buddhist, and Islamic worlds. The transmission of certain initiatic powers is independent of the value of the individual. The initiatic seed, like the seed of life, can be transmitted through many insignificant generations and regains in bloom at the right moment. Naturally, the tests the neophyte undergoes aim at selecting worthy candidates. One must be careful, however, in seeking to judge an initiatic tradition by some of its representatives, who may be merely its vehicles, or who may have only an apparent role, serving to mask the true holders of initiatic power. In view of the rise of materialism and the abhorrent, irresponsible and inhuman egalitarian theories that are a feature of the Kali Yuga, announcing the destruction of the greatest part of humankind, only initiatic societies can keep alive that spark of spiritual life and transmit those essential truths that will allow some of humanity to survive the catastrophe. They represent the soul of the social body. Whether Hindu, Buddhist, Islamic or Christian, such authentic initiatic societies are the only ones that practice the methods by which we can reconquer wisdom, draw near to the divine and realize our transcendent nature.